Understanding the multiple sclerosis medications can be confusing. There's a lot of them and they all work differently and they're given in different ways. In this video series, I intend to help you decode these medicines. Over the next several videos, I'm gonna walk you through a discussion on how these medicines work, how you take them, the various efficacy, safety, and tolerability. River's gonna come with me and together, we're gonna to help you better understand how these meds work. You ready, River? You guys ready? Don't turn away. All that starts right now. Hey! Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video series, I'm going to help you decode the MS medications used to slow down multiple sclerosis. We refer to these medicines as the disease modifying therapies or DMTs. Now, it's a really big conversation. I make this video at the tail end of 2022, and there are over 25 different formulations of MSDMTs on the market, and so there's a lot to talk about. I think one video on the topic would be way too big, and so instead, I'm going to make a series of smaller videos. This first video will focus on route of administration, so the way that we receive these various medications. Let's jump in. In today's video, we'll be discussing three different routes of administration, the first being self-injections, where you, the patient, give yourself the medicine via a shot. And it's interesting that the very first medicines that ever came out for MS in the early 90s are self-injections, and they're still around and available, and one of the very most recent drugs to join the MS armamentarium is also a self-injection. Now, these self-injections have been made uh, to be very easy on the individual. They come essentially in pre-filled syringes that are kind of like pens. So you're not mixing medicines and powders and liquids together, and you're not drawing medicine up out of a vial, nothing like that. You're getting essentially something that looks like a pen out, and this is just a prop, and then you're going to clean off the skin, hold it, Click, it will deliver uh, the medicine, a very small amount of medicine, either under the skin or in the muscle, and then you'll take the used pen and throw it out. And that's a self-injection. Now, when you think about self-injection, there are three different categories of medicines or classes of medicines that are self-injected. And the first that I'll be talking about is copaxone or glutamor acetate. So Copaxone is a medicine which originally was administered 20 milligrams with a self-injection once a day. And more recently, they developed a three times a week version of Copaxone, 40 milligrams three times a week. And just as a quick shout out to my late mentor, Dr. Omar Azor Khan, Dr. Khan developed the clinical trial that led to Copaxone being available three times a week. So that's really awesome that Omar did that. And so Copaxone is a self-injection, most commonly now is taken three times a week, click, and you throw it out. And there are generic versions of Copaxone now, Glutopa is an example, and Glutopa can be given, again, with a self-injection three times a week. There's also a large class of medicines called the beta interferon medicines. And these are medicines like the high-dose interferon beta medicines, which include beta serum and, and Extavia and Rebif, and the low-frequency uh, interferon beta medicines, these would be like Avonex and Plegrity. Now, all of them are self-injections, and the high-frequency ones, beta serum, Plegrity, and Rebif, are essentially given three times a week. And so, three times a week, cleaning off your skin, giving yourself an injection. And the low-frequency are given less often, hence the name. Avonex is the only one of these where you're giving yourself an injection actually in the muscle, and that's administered once a week. Plegrity is just under the skin, and that's done once every two weeks. And so these are shots that are given for MS, the beta interferon products. They're some of the oldest drugs in the market. I also mentioned that one of the most recent drugs to join the market is a self-injection, and that's a drug called Kisemta, Ufatumumab. Now, Kisemta is not an interferon it's not a Copaxone product. It's actually a, a high efficacy B cell depleter. It's like Ocrevus and uh, Rituxan and drugs like that, except it's given by a self injection that you take once a month. And so that's the first route of administration are the self injections. Real quick before we go on, if you dig this video, 
do me a solid favor and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Those two actions teach the YouTube algorithm that you dig the content and help push it out so more people impacted by MS can benefit. Thank you. The next route of administration we'll be discussing is oral, taking a pill. And there are fortunately a lot of medicines that are now available to treat MS that are pills. The first pill came out in October of 2010. That was a really big deal. I remember when it hit the market how excited we were because before that, the only option was self-injections. Now it turns out there's a bunch of medicines that are available in pill format. And so we'll start off with what I sometimes call king of the pills. This is a drug called Mavenclad. Now Mavenclad or Cladribine is a pill that you take uh, one pill on Monday and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then you're done for the month. So I joke it's like a reverse birth control pill. And then on the second month, you repeat that process, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then you're done for the entire first year. So that's really weird. Then on the anniversary, you repeat that whole process, five pills the first month, five pills the second month, and then you're done taking any more medicine unless you have new disease activity. So that's a very unusual pill. The second category for pills I'll be discussing is the S1P1 receptor modulators. That's a mouthful. So this is drugs like Gelinia and then a bunch of Me Too products, Ponvori, Zaposia, and Mazent. All of those medicines are pills that you take once a day, every day. There's another once a day pill that we take called Abagio. And then there's two other pills that are taken twice a day by mouth. Vumerity is two pills twice a day, and Tecfidera is one pill twice a day. So that's a lot of medicines that are now available by mouth. And so that's the second route of administration, taking a pill for that ill. The third route of administration that we'll be discussing today is intravenous. Now, these are medicines that are not taken by a pill or a self-injection. You go to an infusion center and sit in an infusion chair, and they put an uh, intravenous needle in your arm typically, and it's connected to a bag of liquid, which is then run into your arm. And so there are several medicines now that can treat multiple sclerosis via intravenous. And so alemtuzumab or Limtrata is a heavy hitting uh, induction therapy. It's an intravenous medicine given daily for five consecutive days the first year, then you're done for the whole first year. And then on the anniversary, you do three days in a row on the second year, and then you don't take any more medicine unless you have new disease activity. And so that's a really unusual infusion that you're given. Each of those infusions lasts in total about eight hours, so each day is very long. There's also some medicines that are called B-cell depleters, and these include ocrelizumab, ocrevus, and off-label rituximab, or rituxan. And these are very uh, efficacious medicines used to treat MS that are also given in the vein, typically about once every six months, so twice a year. And lastly, there's a drug called Tysabri, which is given through the vein. Originally, it was given every month, every four weeks. More commonly, we're seeing it given every six weeks. And so the third route of administration is intravenous. Today, we've discussed three routes of administration for the various multiple sclerosis medications. Now, the route of administration is only one facet in understanding MSDMTs. Tune in to the next video when I discuss the frequency of administration and how this factors into the MS decision-making process. Until that video or the next time I see you on a live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.